Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, Cross Beans Production. Welcome back, you're here with Nate to Wait, and this is Cross Beats Production. So in this tutorial, I want to talk about compression. What compression is, what compression does, and how do you use a compressor. First off, I want to explain dynamic range. What is dynamic range? Well, dynamic range is basically the loudest part of the audio source versus the quietest part of the audio source. For example, if you're talking about somebody who's singing, they have somebody singing at a loud part and also somebody singing at a quiet part. So if you look at a compressor, a compressor basically works in the same kind of fashion. A compressor has four different dials normally. On this particular compressor, it has more dials than just four, but for the moment, I just want you to pay attention to the four main dials. The four main dials are in yellow. So first off, it has threshold, ratio, attack, release. The other dial that you may want to pay attention to though is makeup gain. So, how do these affect the way the audio works? Well, threshold. First off, what is the threshold? Threshold is what the compressor knows then to start acting on the signal. So basically if you pull down the threshold and you can see the yellow line at the top here, which I'll just highlight, the threshold is basically telling the compressor when to start acting on the signal. So once I reach the signal there, you can see that the waveform has just hit the threshold. So basically then what happens? Well, the ratio then is controlled or determined by you. Usually a ratio can be set on compressors by 2 to 1, 4 to 1, 6 to 1, 10 to 1, 30 to 1. Depending, it could be more than that, but on this particular compressor you can set 100 to 1 ratio. What is the ratio? So basically the ratio is allowing the compressor to have 2 dB, for example, go in and 1 dB to come out. What happens while it's in the compressor? Well, with the attack and release controls the way that the compressor attacks the audio source. So if we look at the ADSR signal right here, basically what is called the ADSR, it is the attack, decay, sustain, release. So the attack is based on the attack of the compressor versus the attack of the signal. So if you think of the signal being a time-based thing, which most audio is time-based, the attack is what determines where the attack actually hits the attack of the signal, being the transient, and the decay, and then the sustain is the release. So where the release of the actual compressor releases the volume until it returns to zero dB. There is no set rule of thumb when using a compressor. Basically, it's taste versus your creativeness. So a compressor can be used to control the level of a dynamic singer. It can be used to control the amount of reverb in a room, or it can be used to control the amount of sustain on a vocal. So what would you do when you're setting a compressor? Well, basically, if you just look at the audio source that I've got here in front of me in black, this audio source is the kick, like I said. I pulled the threshold down, and I meet the threshold down at the top of the kick's transient. So the threshold has now taken away a part of the volume of the track. So it continues to go through the compressor. Whatever this is being set to, be it 2 to 1, 4 to 1, it's allowing the compressor to have 2 dB or 4 dB go in, and then have the 1 dB come out. So if I pull down the threshold all the way down to basically the the part of the signal that's the quietest part, I have the ratio set to 2 to 1. It's basically 2 dB of that volume is going in, and then that 1 dB is coming out. Based on the attack, I can set the attack to be tastefully wherever I want it to be. So it could be at 10 milliseconds, it could be at 30 milliseconds. It really is just dependent on the audio that you're working on. Then the release, basically the same thing applies. So the release can be set to a fast release to the left, or a really slow release to the right. On some compressors, this may be the other way around. It just depends on the type of compressor you're using. But for now, we'll just stick to what I've got in front of me. So say, for example, I wanted a slow release, which would be all the way to the right. That would allow the audio source that I'm working on to have the signal go into it, and it would mean that the compressor would release the audio very slowly, so it would hold the volume of the same level of volume throughout the entire time it's activating the compressor. So let me just play this kick to you and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So 
So as you can see there, on the lines of the audio, the attack is hitting the signal here. If I just bring this back up, we'll just play it one more time. So you can see there, it's hitting the signal, it's telling the compressor to hold the volume until it releases. So looking back at this ADSR signal again, the attack could be here, and on the compressor I've set the attack to be at 250 milliseconds. So say for example, the attack could be at 250, so say the attack could be here somewhere, or the attack could even be here, where the decay is finally started here, and then it's telling the compressor to release it all the way at the end here. So say for example that would be at 2500 milliseconds, we've got an attack here, and the release right at the end. So the attack basically passes through the compressor without being affected. This is the attack of the signal. And then this attack on the compressor is telling the compressor to grab it later on, which is maybe where the decay would have been. And it continues to bring the volume up if you're increasing the volume of the compressor to bring the volume up to the same level that the original attack was at. So potentially it could bring the entire volume of the signal up and hold it for longer than it was originally when it first went through. So that's basically what compression does. So how can compression be used in your mix? Well, for example, if you have a drum track that you have a snare, a kick, and some hi-hats, or a clap, or something like that, and you've recorded that in a room, maybe in that room there may be some reverb that's occurred because of the bouncing of the sound off the walls and around the room. How a compressor can be used in this scenario could be to bring out the room of that where that drum kit was recorded. So basically you could have the threshold meet the audio source like I did here. You could have the ratio set to 2 to 1. You could have the attack set to whatever is tasteful for that part of the mix. You could have the release so it's continued as long as possible. So basically if you think about the reverb in the room, the reverb in the room would be a lot quieter than the original first part of the attack of the kick drum or the snare. So if you're using a compressor to bring up the reverb of the room, you're basically allowing the compressor to be told that this loudest part of the audio source is quieter now, and the quietest part of the audio source is being made up by the makeup gain here. So in essence, I'll show you what it would look like. So what you can see here is basically the snare uncompressed at the top and the compressed snare. What I've done is basically compress the snare and I've had a long release and a reasonably quick attack. So as you can see, the sustain basically carries on for quite a while now and it does finally release to silence at the end. But that last part of the silence has been brought up in volume quite significantly. I did this on purpose, obviously you may not do this as a normal thing with a compressor, but I did this on purpose so you could see the difference between the attack, sustain and release with the signal. So basically what you can use a compressor for is up to you. Uh, it comes down to a tasteful mix between you know what you decide to do with your track, um, what you want to use it on. Uh, I would recommend when using a compressor not to put it on every single thing just because it will start to suck the life out of your track. Um, compressors are something that you can use tastefully and there is no rule of thumb when using it. It's just based on what you want to do with your mix. So I hope this helped you guys out. If it did, remember to like, subscribe and all that good stuff that you do with the channel. And uh, there'll be more of these tutorials. I just wanted to do a focused tutorial based on compression. So thanks for your time and see you on the next one. Peace.